24 hours of the Passion, 4 a.m. hour, Jesus in the hands of the soldiers. Preparation before each hour. O oh my Lord Jesus Christ, prostrate in your divine presence, I implore your most loving heart to admit me to the sorrowful meditation of the 24 hours in which, for love of us, you wanted to suffer so much in your adorable body and in your most holy soul unto death on the cross. Oh, please, give me help, grace, love, deep compassion and understanding of your sufferings as I now meditate this hour. And for those which I cannot meditate, I offer you my, my will to meditate them, and I willingly intend to meditate them in all the hours in which I have to apply myself to my duties or sleep. Accept, O merciful Lord, my loving intention, and let it be beneficial for me and for all, as if I effectively and in a saintly way accomplished what I wished to practice. Meanwhile, I give you thanks, O my Jesus, for calling me to union with you by means of prayer. And to please you more, I take your thoughts your tongue, your heart, and with this I intend to pray, fusing all of myself in your will and in your love, and stretching out my arms to hug you, I place my head on your heart, and I begin. Jesus, my most sweet life, in clinging to your heart as I sleep, I often feel the piercing of the thorns that penetrate your most sacred heart. Wanting to awaken to you so that you may have at least one soul who acknowledges all of your sorrows, I unite to your passion and I press myself more tightly to your heart. In feeling more vividly the piercing thorns, I wake up and what do I see? What do I hear? I would like to hide you in my heart, to suffer in your place and receive your intense suffering, insults and unimaginable ridicule. Only your love could bear so much outrages. My most patient Jesus, how could you how could one expect anything less from such inhumane people. I now see them mocking you as they cover your face with such thick spittle that it veils the light of your beautiful eyes. But in pouring forth rivers of tears for our salvation, you drive that spittle away. And your enemies, with hearts incapable of withstanding the light of your eyes, cover them again with more spittle. Others, becoming more arrogant and evil, open your sweet mouth and fill it with most nauseating spittle, to the point that they themselves feel nauseated. But as some of it flows away, revealing in part the majesty of your face and supernatural sweetness, they shudder and are moved to shame. To stifle their shame and unleash themselves more freely on you, they blindfold you with a miserable rag and unrestrainably hold themselves on your adorable person. They beat you without pity, they drag you stomp on you, repeatedly strike and slap your face and unleash blows on your head. They scratch you, 
tear your hair and shove you from one place to the next. Jesus, my love, my heart cannot bear to see you undergo so many torments. You want me to observe everything, though I would rather cover my eyes and not see such painful scenes that would tear the heart from anyone's chest. And yet, my love, for you compels me to observe what you are forced to endure. I see that you are like a rag doll in the hands of these soldiers who can mistreat you however they wish. And you do not draw so much as one breath to prepare a ward in your defence. But in seeing them stamp on you, I fear you may die beneath their feet. Jesus, my love and my all, the sorrow I experience for the suffering you endure is so great that I want to shout so loudly as to make myself heard up in the heavens to call the Father the Holy Spirit and all the angels. I wish to make my voice heard to all the corners of the earth. I wish to call our sweet mother first and then all souls who love you so that in forming a circle around you we may prevent these insolent soldiers from drawing near you to insult you and to torment you yet more. Together with you we make reparation for all sins committed at night, especially those of sectarians who desecrate you in the consecrated host of your sacramental person, and for all the offences of souls who do not remain faithful in the night of trial. But I see my insulted Good Jesus, that the soldiers, tired and drunk, now wish to rest and my poor heart, oppressed and lacerated by so many of your torments, does not wish to remain alone with you. It feels the need of the company of another. Oh, please, my sweet mother, be my inseparable companion. Let us embrace Jesus together and console him. O oh, Jesus, together with our tender mother Mary, I kiss you and I bless you, and with her I take my sleep of love upon your adorable heart. Reflections and Practices by St. Hannibal de Francia In this hour, Jesus is among the soldiers like flint, with iron constancy. As God, he suffers all the strains the soldiers put him up against, and looks at them with so much love that he seems to invite them to inflict upon him more torments. And are we constant when we endure repeated trials? Or do we complain, get irritated and lose our peace? That peace of the heart which is necessary to allow Jesus to assume his happy dwelling in us? Firmness is the virtue that makes us know whether or not God really reigns in us. If we possess true virtue, we will be firm in our trials with a firmness that is not subject to inconstancy, but that is unchanging. The more we become firm in the good, in suffering and in our labours, 
the more we are able to impact all souls around us in whom Jesus will expand his grace. Therefore, if we are inconstant, our capacity to impact creation will be small and Jesus will have little or no space in us. But if we are firm and constant, Jesus will find in us a very large capacity. He will find in us his bulwark, his support and a place in which to extend his grace. If we want our beloved Jesus to rest in us, let us surround him with his own firmness with which he operated for the salvation of souls. Being sheltered, he will remain in our hearts and there take up his sweet rest. Jesus looked with love at those who mistreated him. Do we look at those who offend us with the same love? Is the love we show them so great that it becomes a voice for their hearts and so powerful that it converts them to Jesus? Beloved Jesus, boundless love, grant me this love and let each pain of mine beckon souls to you. Thanksgiving after each hour. My lovable Jesus, you have called me in this hour of your passion to keep you company and I have come. I seem to hear you praying, repairing and suffering in anguish and sorrow, pleading for the salvation of souls in the most touching and eloquent voices. I tried to follow you in everything, and now, having to leave you for my usual occupations, I feel the duty to say to you, thank you, and I bless you. Yes, O oh Jesus, I repeat to you, thank you, thousands and thousands of times, and I bless you for all that you have done and suffered for me and for all. I thank you and I bless you for every drop of blood you shed, for every breath, for every heartbeat, for every step, word, glance, bitterness and offence which you endured. In everything, O oh my Jesus, I intend to seal you with a thank you and I bless you. Please, O oh Jesus. Let my whole being send you a continuous flow of thanks and blessings, so as to draw down upon me and upon everyone the flow of your blessings and thanks. Please, O oh Jesus, press me to your heart and with your most holy hands seal every particle of my being with your I bless you, so that nothing other than a continuous hymn to you may come from me.